taruh di atas. So, um, yeah, the, uh, before I begin, um, part of your testimony reminded me as well, you mentioned, yeah, dealing with your niece, which was your child? No, it, in, in my 20s, it got diagnosed with a degenerative knee condition. I remember that one. Well, um, so I, I went up to, uh, I have problems with a knee. It's been swollen for months. I don't even know how long. It's been swollen for months. I can't um, crush down all the way. I can't my knee all the way. It's a big problem when you have kids because they always have balance or whatever and all that. Um, so, um, of course, not praying about it or anything logical like that. Uh, <laughs> and you're saying I can't. Oh my gosh, I'm so good at my knee. So very lucky. I go to, uh, I go to Dave Parker. So this is the, the grid that I came up with, three components. 
opposite reaction, right? Which is how these kind of things um, uh, work, or at least that's what was coming to my mind when I was having prayer about it. So a father's role to provide whatever um, kids need, right? Not everything they want, but everything that they need. Um, protect them as much as you can. Obviously, they still put their heads open on their own, but drive as much as you can to protect them and to teach them. So obviously, as they grow older, they're supposed to become wiser, they're supposed to learn things, they're supposed to know more things than that. And likewise, with us in the Lord as well. The Lord provides for us what we eat, not everything that we want, not a genie in the bottle, but provides what we need, uh, protects us, and um, teaches us as well through the Word. Then we have um, uh, the child, child role. So it's not just um, all benefit. There's, there's some things that need to be done on the other end as well. When the Lord provides for us, like you said, it's not everything that we necessarily want. But we have the, and our role is dependent. In knowing that, we will be provided for. We have the food, the clothes, whatever it is that we need, and whatever it is the Lord decided he wanted to, uh, to bless us with at, at that moment, and so on and so forth. Um, the Lord protects us. So we have that sense of security, and we're meant to be without fear in this world. We're meant to be uh, bold and relying on him. And so that's our reaction. That's our behavior towards what we get from the Lord, that protection, just like we want, uh, we would want our children to not have to worry about um, anything else. If they feel safe and secure in their home, when they're around you, that sort of thing. And um, again, with the teaching, the Lord teaches us, well, we're expected to actually learn and, to, and desire to learn and to grow in the Lord and to do those kinds of things. We'll, we'll go over that. We're going to go to, um, to start with John 15. This is just an overall idea about this relationship, about the love and about the balanced sides of it, the, the reaction and equal and opposite reaction, if you will. So starting at verse 7, if ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Here it is my father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, and ye should so shall ye be my disciples. Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Even as I have kept my Father's commandments, abide in his love. Just like if my children abide in my commandments, <laughs> they'll abide in my love, right? So, <laughs> similar, similar sort of thing. Um, of course, we know that we'll always love our children. It's not that the Lord will always love us, you know, we make mistakes. But um, we know that when we're, we are doing what we're meant to do, it's a much stronger and fulfilling relationship in that way. Verse 11. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, that your joy... So this relationship that we have, this reaction and reaction sort of relationship, is meant to benefit us even though it may seem like we're on the lesser end, so to speak. Um, it's meant to be that it causes us joy, it causes us fullness of life, it causes us safety, security, all those other benefits as well. But it's the whole purpose of this relationship is that our joy might be full. Um, number 12, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Same thing my kids are fighting, I don't like that very <laughs> So the Lord has a sense of similar kind of thing, I, I would imagine. Um, love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man in this than a man lay down his life for his friend. And so obviously there is no greater love than what the Lord uh, has for us and what our Father has for us as children. Ye are my friends if ye do whatsoever I command you. Wait, what? That's like, um, I think the 
using sometimes either amongst themselves or on a playground sort of sort of setting. Or if you don't do what I say, I'm not going to do it. Or because you don't do this, then you're not my friend anymore. And <laughs> you kind of have that, it kind of sounds like that a little bit. And um, you might say, well, um, that, that doesn't quite sound right. So you're saying that unless I do
very familiar scripture to all of us in this room. Therefore, I say unto you, and I, I picture this too when um, speaking to my children as I'm saying this as well. I say unto you, take no thought for your life. What you shall eat. Mom, what's for dinner? What do we have? Don't worry about it. Don't want to make cut it. We're going to do the best we can. Whatever we have, I'm going to do. I'm not going to, I'm not going to keep you poisoned or something. It will be in the future. Um, take no thought for your life. What you shall eat. What you shall drink. Or yet for your body. What you shall put on. It is not the life more than me. And the body more than drink. There's silly things to, to be worried about. But Lord, the Lord is going to make sure we have Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap or gather into barns, but your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to his stature? How can you solve the problem anymore by worrying about this? And so we have, you might think again, of children becoming worried, becoming anxious, becoming um, persistent.
First, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Therefore, take no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is it. Sufficient to each day is the evil thereof. Praise the Lord. So, the Lord's providing for us. So, what's our job then? Our uh, decides to be. Godliness with contentment is great gain. I'm going to stop there, but I thought the rest of it applied as well. So it's sticking to reading verse 7. It will be brought by the end of this world, and it is certain we will carry nothing. Now, to have food and raiment, let us bear with each of them. For they that will be rich fall to seek education and snare and many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown in the Love of money is the root of all evil, which while some covet after, they have there from the faith to pierce themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, and peace. And it's not that the money is bad or that the riches are bad, hate and love them not, but if your concern is there, if you're worried about Like with your kids, um, when you uh, when they want something else and they're not happy with what it is that uh, what it is that they have, you're thinking, well, we'll get to that later. We'll do that thing later. We'll have this fun later. It's not happening right now. Just by worry and and um, complain and do, you know all this. Why can't you just enjoy what you have? Here now, be quiet, settle down, <laughs> just and and um, and have joy with what you have now. I think about when I read about these things, I look at um, or I think about uh, Dr. Seuss and Captain Hat. Opening scene, have you seen that cartoon? And there's these sad kids sitting in front of a window, looking outside at the rain. Their toy shelf with all the stuff stacked and half falling off. And over here, see their games all stacked up over here, and their other things stacked up over here, and their books all stacked up, and all this stuff that they have inside sitting right behind them. They're looking outside like, what do we have not? And we can be like that too. And the Lord, you know, again, must see us as children, saying, I've given you this. Um, I'm not saying that you'll never go outside, but right now, why don't you just chill out and go play with that other stuff? <laughs> why don't you not just um, be half joy and, uh, and happy? And we would love our children to do the same thing. I think that's why that, that illustration continues uh, to us. To think about it in that way. And, um, we, again, we want, uh, we want our children to As parents and as husbands and as probably as pastors and other uh, relationships that I've mentioned, you know, we, our intentions are there. We do our best, but even more so, our relationship with the Lord, our relationship with our Father, He does the best. He's not just doing the best. Yeah, he does the best. When we stop and we realize that that statement right there, that um, anything that's happening, anything we have or Experiencing or not experiencing at the moment is what he intends. It's a very special moment. We need to find joy in that. We need to find comfort in that. We need to find contentment and security in that. Um, the children of Israel in, uh, in the desert. Um, 
you know, they did a lot of like small things. And you know, there are a few points in the story where God was almost like a natural father. A few of his complaints and um, um, lack of all these things, lack of contentment, lack of everything. And um, like we would, like we would say sometimes uh, to our children, um, we're going to give you what we're going to tell you. you know, like, like Joseph was, was sold. Um, you're going to go. And was God having a bit of a joke in some of these uh, situations with the children of Israel? When he, when he spoke to Moses and he's like, all right, just forget it, scrap a whole lot. They don't. They're not getting it, right? They're not, they're not uh, understanding that. Look, I'm bringing you from one point to another point. It wasn't the shortest line possible. In fact, they went all over the place to, to try them, to build them, to, to, you know, it was all for them, even the hard times. It for them, right? And the Lord had their best intentions and was bringing them up through that. And all they needed to do was um, trust Him in those things and understand that they would always be provided for. They would always have safety and security. They would always have all of those things. You know, whether in the natural it, it seemed like that or not, they were supposed to trust in the Lord. And, and with all the complaining and not trusting, not making on, the Lord was saying, Look, why don't we just, look this, how about you and I, let's start over and we just forget that. And um, I don't know if that was uh, the words of humor or not. Um, of course, he knows, the, he knows the plan before he starts it out, but he didn't end up doing that then. But what happened? When they got to, uh, when they got to the promised land, and again, no trust or any of that, um, the Lord did finally say, well, then, just forget it. Because I've shown you this whole way for the past 40 years. I've provided for you miracles, you know, um, manna from the sky, uh, the shoes never wore out, um, you know, the millions of people, we all got fed, and, um, you know, just thing after thing after thing. We know, we know all of those things, but they complain. We don't have any meat. We don't have our garlic and our um, and our leeks and all that kind of stuff. Um, and for a while, we, we didn't even see Moses. So we complained about that. They were made golden calf. And uh, you know, the final straw was they got to they got to the promised land, and they were like, "Oh, we can't go in there." And so the Lord's like, "My goodness, <laughs> just forget it." And so we need to make sure that we're not going to. That, we're, that the Lord's not going to say, all the things I've been doing for you in your whole walk, and now you're coming up this, to this next thing. It's never going to be the last thing. But you're coming up to this next thing. And um, you don't ever want the Lord to say, just forget it. You know, you don't believe me, so we're not going to let you have it. Um, let's go to Philippians.
Babylonian. He's like, yes, and happily ever after the end. But you know, no, it's not. <laughs> it's not the end. There's always going to be a next step. There's always going to be something else. It could be another clinic trial. It could be another. Uh, it could be anything. But it's not the end. It's not. Uh, and um, so it's like, Whatever happens, happens because the Lord is the one that saves. Um, the Lord is the one leading us, instructing our lives, possibly bringing us through a wilderness situation. Um, and sometimes we'll be blessed um, beyond what we thought, and sometimes we'll not get what we thought we had. And same with the children. I'm sure they'll go through that too. Oh, they're falling. You know, sometimes they'll. Sometimes it's like, why aren't I getting what I want? But we can be the same way. But we just have to trust that everything happening to us, for us, and all that is what is supposed to be going on for our benefit. And, and remember those things um, throughout our walk. Um, I haven't got to the first one. We're protected by God. Um, in Psalms 3, whole thing, starting with verse 1, um, Psalm of David, uh, Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. So we can think of our own trials and tribulations. Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. It's a lot. But thou, O Lord, are a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head. So maybe protection here and maybe shield. The Lord is a shield for me. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. I lay down and slept. I awake, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of the ten thousand of people that have set themselves. <laughs> I mean, how bad is that? Your own family is trying to kill you. That's why you're afraid of them. Uh, but anyway, running from that, I was looking for the Lord. I will not be afraid of tens of thousands of people. Uh, verse 7. Arise, O Lord, save me, O oh my God, for thou hast smitten all my enemies upon, upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongs to the Lord, thy blessing is upon me. I love that, uh, I love that verse 7. I love that verse 7. You think of a little kid saying, uh, well, my dad's going to protect me. Right? You think of a dad, uh, a dad coming over and sorting everybody out, sort of thing. It probably happened more uh, when I was younger than it does now. But um, you think about here, Lord, Lord, you punch my enemies in the face. Is what it's saying. <laughs> Basically, what it's saying. You punch my enemy in the face. Uh, it says, you know, smit them on the cheekbone and uh, broken the teeth of the ungodly. You punch the bad guys in the face. The Lord does that for us. He protects us uh, like a father or a superhero or whatever you want to envision there. We have that. We have that protection from him. He's our shield. On that because the other side we have that security. We don't have to be um, in any kind of fear. Um, just think of um, think of the bad situations throughout the old Old Testament. I think of uh, I think of David once again going up against Goliath, and we know that story pretty well. But I just I love the attitude and I love the dialogue. I didn't I didn't have to look up. But I love the dialogue. And to paraphrase, uh, being, um, you know, there's a giant standing there. So they're supposed to be like nine feet or something. The giant there, big bad guy, full of armor, all these weapons. He's 
killed whoever, he's nobody can defeat him, everyone's afraid of him. And up comes this um, up comes this little boy that says, this guy think he is? Nothing. I mean, what people get but everybody can afraid of him and, and David just comes out and like, <coughs> so what? Who cares? Um, because we because he had the Lord. He didn't, it wasn't him. He didn't he didn't compare his own size and, and skill set against this guy. He was he didn't see the battle like that. He didn't see the battle of me versus him. He saw the battle of the Lord, who was everything and all powerful to that this week over there. This is a giant that I don't play with. And so he was like, so what? Let's do this. If you rock, let's go. And that was it. And we think of, um, of, of Joshua, right? Getting people to the promised land. Go back to, to that story. When everyone else is, is, is scared. Um, we have Joshua saying, so what? Let's go. Let's go in. It's not a matter of us, like a giant looking in. It's not a matter of us and, and, and them, or our skill set versus their skill set, or our side versus their side. It's the Lord. Our father versus all these other kinds of things that are supposed to be saying, you know, and we have that protection. We have that security. We have that fearlessness. We think of David's fearlessness that he had. Wasn't bothered at all. They tried to give him a suit of armor to wear into the battle. He tried it out and like, man, that's not much to watch. Give me a couple rocks. Let's go. And they let him do it. Let's do it. Let's move on to um, teaching. <laughs> we try to teach our children. We now, the Lord tries to teach us. The Lord gives us the scripture and whatnot. I'll just read John, uh, John 14, verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father has sent in my name, shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said on you. Now the Holy Ghost teaches us, the Lord leads us through the Holy Spirit word and through each other, um, delivering messages through each other like we'll have next week, kitchen day, and so on. The Lord teaches us. But it's our, we have this opposite side. It's our responsibility to then learn. We can hear these things all day, we can read these things all day, we can come to a meeting for years, and I think it was Pastor P who says, you can be uh, 10 years old in the Lord, or you can be in the Lord. Over and over and over and over again, because you're not you're not learning, you're not taking your your the responsibility, taking it in and growing. Um, another thing he says, um, Proverbs says, "It's the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings to search out a matter." So it's like the, the Lord has this uh, this treasure, right, just for us to find, just for us to seek out, dig out, and grow by. Strong people, honest to them, who are of 
of use have their sense exercise to discern both the security and the system. We're talking about the maturity and growing in the Lord. So praise the Lord. And um, so I have to start up there. Modern child relationship. I think there's there's three categories here uh, of how it can help us in a practical way in that. Number one is the perspective. It's a perspective that we are like children in God's sight. And so if we think sometimes, you know, about um, fathers or just the parents in general and their children, or any other kind of relationship that this really um, can apply to, that um, keep that perspective. How would you like the child to behave? Who are the parents? How would you expect them to behave? You know. Your role. You know your role and responsibility. And um, you know your love for them. You know what you're going to do for them. You know how you'll protect them at all costs. You know how you're, you're going to provide these basic things to them. You know how you want to bless them abundantly, but you don't want to spoil them at the same time. You know how you want to um, you know, do all these things. Just think of that way that you were talking there. ourselves to God, so we can have we can have that same mindset. Oh, I should be this. And I should be um, whatever we think we are. The next thing is um, the practical thing is that, uh, that there is that balance. Right? There is that. You know, God does provide, and we are indeed also to bless. He does provide. Think of the children. God provided, manna. it was a miracle. He provided manna. I experienced that for about three months. I got ten dollars every day, twenty dollars every day. But Lord, we want better than that. Okay, well, the former. There's another side of that. It's like oh, man, and then day after day after day. But our jobs to do We're going to do it. And every time we run into a situation where it's like, you know, thinking like, Christ, what are we going to do? We're not going to do anything. Um, we're out of money, so the Lord's got to do something. Plain and simple. And so, it may not be what you want, but He provides and it's a miracle. It may not. But this manna that they had is great, but it's sustainable. And of course, the idea was like, through the trials and all that, and then bless them. <sighs> Continuing with the, with the balance of it, God protects, therefore, we trust Him. We are fearless in our activity. God teaches, but we also have to remember you know, it's our responsibility to dig in, to look, grow, find out. Nobody else can see what I mean. No, we need to find out. The Lord has put it there to teach us. The Holy Ghost and His Word, all things which all of us have failed to listen to. And, um, yeah, like I said, finally, it's a model for us. Father and children, husband and wife, God, church, pastor, flock. Um, it's, a, it's a model of a, of a relationship for us. It's a, it's a love. Fearlessness and stuff of the other. So, the balance relationship. Okay, so we'll leave it there. And um,